Hey friends! Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to care for a pregnant guinea pig before and after their pregnancy. Thanks for being here and we're going to just jump right into it. <laughs> Since everybody running <laughs> and you don't even care, <laughs> he's still just eating. Someone called you a Buddha pig. Are you a Buddha pig? First and foremost, I just want to say that if you ever have any questions, like serious questions about your guinea pig and if it's pregnant or what to do, please seek a veterinarian. Professional advice is always going to be the first thing I recommend. So again, the only reason I have any experience with pregnant guinea pigs is because I rescued a breeding herd. This is David. He was the breeding male of the herd. He is neutered, so babies no more. We will not be having any more babies here. If you are getting guinea pigs in pairs, um, it is my best advice to keep them separated until you go to a vet and have them double check the sex of the guinea pigs because it is very common for them to miss sex guinea pigs and they all say you're taking home two females or you're taking home two males and in fact one is female one is male and then what happens most times is people end up with a pregnant female not knowing how and it's because one of them is male one of them is female or they'll just buy one from the pet store that's already pregnant it happens a lot because if you don't separate the babies after a month or so they say to separate sexes pretty soon because they'll just kind of start. A female guinea pig's gestation period is roughly between 60 and 70 days. Some websites will say 58 to 72, but like to give a rough estimate, it's about 60 to 70 days. It isn't necessarily obvious until pretty close to the end. Um, the female will take on a pear shape um, and it'll be a firm pear shape. So towards, I mean, you can kind of see on Alexis right now where she was pregnant, how she's still bows out right here kind of like her belly is right now but it'll be tighter and higher you know kind of like a pregnant woman is high and tight when she's actually pregnant and then you know she still has the belly as right after pregnancy and then, but it'll be a tight pear shape and that's how you will know as far as the pregnant females needs she will need to have more water and food than normal. What I do is I just make sure that there's extra water bottles and all the water bottles are full in her cage. So she's got access to three different water bottles um, because a pregnant female will drink a lot more than a regular guinea pig and when she's nursing. So while she's pregnant and while she's nursing, she will need a lot of water. Same thing with food. It's recommended that your pregnant guinea pig should receive the triple amount of vitamin C they get in a day. Whether that be through what I use sometimes is this Child Life liquid vitamin C. So you can either give it to them in this form and then look up the milliliters because per the size of the guinea pig, you will want to do it according to their size. An adult female, what do they say, five milliliters, I think, is what's average for the liquid form. You can also do, I don't think I have any right now. They have some coming in the mail right now, but Oxbow, this isn't what I'm talking about, but Oxo has a vitamin C pellet. You can use those or, you know, just make sure you're giving veggies that are higher in vitamin C. Um, but they also say to be careful about the amount of parsley you give your pregnant guinea pig. It can interrupt and interfere with pregnancy and potentially cause miscarriage. I have read that. So just be mindful or maybe ask your vet. Where are your other sisters and brothers? Where is everybody? Oh, you can go find them. I offer alfalfa hay more to a pregnant guinea pig and the baby guinea pigs than I do you know, just my average adult guinea pig. I do give it to all of them as like a treat. Maybe once a day or once every other day, I will sprinkle it in there as just like a yummy. Hi, yummy. You're... <laughs> Why are you so amazing? Oh, everybody. David, your babies are here. Go tell them what to do. Hi, baby. She's so little. Why are you so little? Can I even put it in there, big girl? You still a hungry mama. Oh, they're on a date. Look, they're on a date. How nice is that? 
I feel like she gets so annoyed when they like beg her to breastfeed. She's just kind of like, you just like see her like puff out like this. This makes me feel pregnant, this shirt. But also look how amazing it is. Oh, look, I don't have a lab, but I pretend like Matoro is a lab and it's a little Momo. That's my dog. Look, this one's the best. Look. I mean, they're all the same picture, but I love that they're on the arms too. Look, it's baby Momos. So pregnant females will naturally feel more protective. So it is best to not handle them unless necessary, you know, nail clippings or if there's something medical you need to check them for. But ultimately it is best to just kind of let them be because you don't want to stress them out. And um, again, because their natural instinct is to protect themselves. Um, they are a prey animal and then being pregnant, it, you know, they really do tend to not want to be bothered. So my best advice is to, you know, not change their environment too much. So whatever their cage is like, you know, obviously clean it and things like that, but just sort of keep the same things in there. Maybe don't rearrange things too much. Or if you notice that your pig likes a certain bed or a tunnel in a certain place, you know, make sure that you kind of keep putting that same toy or Heidi in the same area to make them feel comfortable. It's just good to not change their environment too much. You know, just let them be, kind of let them just be uncomfortable and pregnant, you know? Pay attention to your pregnant pig and make sure that her, you know, water bottles are at a height that she's comfortable to get to, you know, make sure her hay is in a place that is accessible for her because when they, when they do start to get rather large, it is harder for them to jump over things or like Alexis, her going up the ramp. Once she would get to the top, you would just like see her kind of like dig her claws in and just like really have to work for that last few inches, which is why she is on the bottom level. Thankfully, she had her babies on the bottom level because she had them in the middle of the night. So now I'm going to talk about delivery. Um, it does happen fairly quickly. I have only been present for that one time. I did sort of panic because I wasn't aware what guinea pigs sound like or what their actions are like when they're having contractions. So I thought Bebe was ha was choking a little bit because she was kind of making little, almost like cough sneeze sounds where she was just like, <coughs> like the, you know, kind of hunching over, but that was her having contractions. I just had never experienced that before. And then what she would do was, you know, curl down how they go to, you know, take a poop out or clean themselves. She was bending down and sort of licking at her private area, which was her way of sort of inducing the pregnancy to like help it along. And I mean, and, and once she started doing that, it was like, baby. I mean, it was like, all of a sudden the baby was coming out. So the babies will come out in what's called an amniotic sac, and it looks, kind of just like a clear film that's all around them. And the mother should break it open with her teeth and you should give her the opportunity to do it. Now, again, if you're finding that she's not breaking open the sack, it will be important for you to do it because then the, the baby will die because it can't breathe in the sack. Usually what the mother will do is have the baby break open the sack. Another one will come out. She'll break open that sack. Um, and depending on however many she has in the litter, you know, that's what she'll do for all of them, hopefully. And then she'll eat the umbilical cord and she'll, she'll clean them off and she should do everything herself. You will notice the placentas, they do come out. So she will have a placenta for every baby. So if she has two babies, two placentas will come out. She has four babies, four placentas come out, you know, and they're about this big and and they kind of just look like a weird fleshy blood sack. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. I mean, it's, you know, it's not super gross or anything, but she will eat those. If you were to come in like I did with Alexis and she'd had hers in the middle of the night, you, you won't see a placenta because she will have already eaten them. And the reason that she does that is because in the wild, they're trying to hide any scent of themselves so that a predator can't find them. So they try to clean up as much as they can so that they don't attract predators from the smell of the blood. There are some articles that I have read that said if your your guinea pigs 
having babies in a domesticated environment, it's okay to take the placenta away because then the mother isn't distracted by trying to eat the placenta to protect the babies and will be able to just focus on the babies instead. And then you'll hear in the latter that they need the placenta for nutrients and that it helps stimulate lactation. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but again, always, always ask a vet. So as far as once the babies are born, I mean, really there's not much that you need to do. I mean, they are very self-sufficient. The mom, usually the moms are great. They do everything they need to do. I mean, really they just breastfeed up to three to four weeks is what they say. They say wean after four. So baby guinea pigs come out pretty much ready to go. They're walking, they can see, they can eat. I mean, they'll eat hay. I mean, sometimes immediately, but at least within like the first three days, they're already eating hay and, you know, provide baby guinea pig pellets for them, like baby food for size for one, and it has more nutrients in it. And it's also good for the mother to eat um, baby guinea pig food while she's nursing. But I mean, otherwise they're really so easy. It's kind of wild how big they come out because you wouldn't think they would come. I mean, they come out bigger than a bunny, like a baby bunny. I I don't understand it, but they do. My only other advice would be is if your pregnant guinea pig is living in a herd with multiple pigs, you may want to separate them um, for the first few weeks so that the mom doesn't feel like she needs to like protect them from the other pigs or the other pigs aren't trying to like interfere with her. I've noticed that it changed a lot of my pigs' behavior, so I did separate them into different sections according to like what was going to be best for Alexis. They say to separate the male. I did separate David with all of them for the first week, but he's great. I mean, he doesn't pick on the babies. He's not alpha with them. He's not really alpha with Alexis, so he does really well as a father figure, and he stays with them, and the, the babies love him. So I'm just really lucky with David. So the footage you are gonna see of them today is of them at two weeks old, but I'm also gonna have Josh show you what they look like as a day old. I mean, they're gonna be a lot smaller, but still they're impressively large and functional and it's just adorable. Then this is them right now. I love when David chooses to like sleep in there with the door open, I find it. This is their nap time. He has put himself to sleep. We're gonna have to shut the door. That's all my advice and information I have on how to care for your pregnant guinea pig and what to expect during and after. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and for all the support. Love you, love you, love you guys.